you for tuning into The Boardroom, where we highlight important updates, discussions, and decisions from each monthly Atlanta Public Schools Board Meeting. I am Cherise Starby, and this is an inside view of The Boardroom from the August 12th meeting. The board continues to do work regarding the search for a permanent superintendent. At the August 12th board meeting, two search firms presented their qualifications and answered a series of eight questions before the board. These two search firms were being considered to help facilitate the district search for a permanent superintendent. Um, I have been in search in Atlanta for 35 years. The first 25 years was in corporate executive search. 11 years ago, I made an affirmative decision to start Boardwalk to focus specifically on community facing uh, engagements. And since then, have, my colleagues and I have conduct, conducted some 200 assignments for clients in 27 states from Oregon to Massachusetts to California to Florida. All of those uh, in, for nonprofit organizations or tax exempt organizations. During the legislative meeting, the board voted to select Boardwalk Consulting as the new superintendent search firm for the district based on the recommendation from procurement. Dr. Alexis Kirian, APS Chief Strategy and Development Officer, gave a brief report on the district's day one APS back to school readiness effort. Schools have opened, students and teachers are hard at work, and the rest of the school year promises more success than ever for our students across the city. Atlanta Public Schools opened their doors to year-round students on July 15th and for traditional students on August 7th. The goal for a successful day one is to ensure that APS students, parents, staff, and facilities are informed, equipped, and ready for teaching and learning on the first day of school. During the presentation, Dr. Kirian highlighted real life scenarios for planning, highlights from this year's day one efforts, centralized registration, and the day one APS command center. Staffed by rotating teams of 25 trained employee volunteers from every division, the command center was set up to help principals and parents during an especially busy time, the first five weekdays of the school year. The command center responded to over 1,600 calls. Parents were able to access the command center by calling the district's main line. Command center volunteers were on hand to answer questions about a full range of back to school topics. Alva Hardy, Executive Director of Facilities at APS, gave a brief presentation before the board on some of the environmental hazards the district remediated over the summer in preparation for the first day of school. During the presentation, Mr. Hardy discussed the extraordinary weather and environmental factors, including the presence of excessive rainfall in the state, which attributed to increased mold levels and in facilities across the metro Atlanta area. Additionally, Mr. Hardy highlighted other schools across the district where the presence of mold was identified and remediated prior to the first day of school. Specifically, Hardy discussed the current mold and drainage remediation efforts at Washington High School. We have established abatement protocols for how to deal with this. Again, it's something that we encounter year round and just this summer has been a little more uh, involved. So the first thing you have to do is identify it. Uh, that's usually through odor or visual observation. Uh, this really comes from people in the building, people on the ground and we're reviewing our protocols for confirming how we communicate this information, whether it comes in through risk management or facilities or through other uh, health uh, locations within our, in our district. Uh, they would then go out and evaluate it when it's been identified. We have uh, staff in our environmental division who are trained in what to do with environmental hazards. Mold just happens to be one of them. They go out and look at it. It could be something as small as some spots in the corner that you just wipe down and it's gone. And if, it, and if it's more than that, we have professional contractors that are already uh, available to us through our procurement processes to come out and assess the spaces to see what the severity of the, the growth is. Based on that, they then make a recommendation for what the proper remediation uh, is. And again, it can be cleaned by us if it's not very, uh, very much. We have approved cleaning agents and we basically wipe, wipe everything down. And then again, depending on the actual, uh, what they find, we hire professional cleaning contractors, remediation contractors to clean it. 
Chief Financial Officer Chuck Burbridge presented the financial forecast before the board at the August 12th meeting. According to Burbridge, the district received favorable news from FY13 surrounding revenue and community resources. Additionally, Burbridge discussed the new motor vehicle tax having a positive effect on revenues. He also discussed the financial forecast for the month of July. In comparison to FY12, uh, fiscal year revenue were, was down by almost $20 million, so that's clearly not, not good news that the revenue was down by $20 million. Um, the, the, I think the, what we can say is good is that it's, it, we, we thought it was going to be worse than that when we started the fiscal year. So uh, the fact that uh, it was only down by $20 million is good news. Uh, the district uh, uh, managed its spending throughout the year so that uh, in, in, uh, you might say that we matched that revenue decline with uh, spending moderation so that uh, spending was uh, down also by approximately 20 some million dollars uh, compared to the prior year. So with uh, revenue and spending both being down by, by only approximately 20 million dollars, the, the fund balance for FY13 is uh, essentially unchanged. It actually grew a little bit. Community stakeholders came out in large numbers to this month's board meeting to encourage the board to allow the David T. Howard building to remain open for educational use and APS. According to board chair Ruben McDaniel, the David T. Howard building will not be demolished. Superintendent Errol Davis said he would like to collect the various options the community has surrounding the use of the building at this time. Additionally, the board engaged in lengthy discussions surrounding the transition from a small school structure at Washington High School. The board originally planned to take action on a resolution outlining next steps for the transition process. Instead, the board decided to pull the resolution from the agenda in order to receive additional feedback and input from stakeholders at the upcoming community meetings scheduled for August 21st and 27th. After hearing from the community, the board plans to hold a special call meeting to address the timeline and process of the transition of Washington high school small schools to small learning communities. On April 19, 2013, Atlanta Public Schools received seven petitions for proposed startup charter schools to begin operations in 2014-2015. Of those petitions, two, Heinz Feet Montessori School of the Arts and Atlanta Classical Academy still require board action. Both petitions were reviewed by a team of internal and external experts, underwent a capacity interview, and were given a list of reviewer concerns. These concerns were addressed in writing by both applicant groups. Atlanta Classical Academy adequately addressed reviewer concerns by agreeing to open with a more manageable size, K-8, through providing a more detailed plan for recruiting and hiring a school leader, providing more information regarding the diversity plan, and providing an acceptable facilities plan. While the updated plan from Heinz Feet adequately addresses several reviewer concerns, concerns remain regarding the proposed leader's lack of school leadership experience, the proposed leader's lack of Montessori instructional experience, the founding board's transition plan in which several founding board members become paid employees. This is complicated by the fact that under the charter school's proposed plan, these individuals loan money to the school and are repaid with interest. The superintendent's recommendation to the board was to deny the approval of the charter school petitions of Atlanta Classical Academy and Heinz Feet. After lengthy discussion, the board voted to remove the Heinz Feet charter petition action item from the agenda and provided the school with a 30-day extension. Additionally, the board voted to approve the charter for Atlanta Classical Academy for the 2014-15 school year. Accredited Solutions Incorporated performed an assessment of the finance division, and the assessment revealed that the payroll department has a flat organization model with silos of functionality. It was determined that changes would be necessary in order to avoid the single point of failure risk, improve cross-functional knowledge, and provide the necessary bench strength the department needs to be more effective. In order to accomplish a realignment of the payroll department and to establish positions which are consistent with marketplace demands, a total of six accounts payable positions were recommended for abolishment at the August 12th meeting. The abolishment of these roles, along with the creation of a new set of strategic and supervisory roles, will help advance the capabilities of the payroll organization. Additionally, two payroll accounting analyst positions with increased duties and responsibilities and three payroll associate positions were recommended for creation. The board voted to approve the realignment of the positions. Ultimately, this restructure will transform the payroll department from a tactical process-oriented culture into a high-performing and operationally efficient organization.
In an effort to provide after-school enrichment services throughout the district, the Atlanta Public Schools Procurement Services Department solicited vendors to provide after-school enrichment services. A total of nine proposals were received and evaluated. At the August 12th board meeting, the board authorized the superintendent to enter into and execute contracts with DAB Productions and Entertainment, Glenn Pelham Foundation for Debate Education, Inc., Mosiah Roots Outdoors Adventures and Fitness, Principles of Manhood, Project Sincere, True Star Foundation, Inc., and University Instructors, Inc. to provide after-school enrichment services. These contracts shall be for one year with four one-year available options to be exercised at the discretion of the superintendent. Additionally, these contracts contracts are conditional upon the firm's ability to comply with requirements set forth in the solicitation document. The Atlanta Public Schools Procurement Services Department solicited vendors to provide professional development and tutorial services for the Flexible Learning Program. Sixteen were received and evaluated. The board voted to authorize the superintendent to enter into and execute contracts with the EdMac Company, Inc., Editor Professional Development and Scholastic, Inc. for Professional Development, and Vision Tutoring Educational Foundation, Inc. for tutoring services for flexible learning programs. These contracts shall be for one year with a one-year available option to be exercised at the discretion of the superintendent. These contracts are conditional upon the firm's ability to comply with requirements set forth in the solicitation document. Based on the year-end close process, it is anticipated that the pre-kindergarten lottery fund will end the fiscal year with a deficit fund balance of approximately $300,000. The deficit was a result of the state shortening the school day for preschool students. APS did not want preschool students adversely affected and decided to keep the full-length day. The state requires that all funds maintain a positive fund balance. As part of our plan to eliminate this deficit, an operating transfer from general fund was necessary. At the August 12th meeting, the Atlanta Board of Education approved the transfer of up to $300,000 from the general fund balance to the lottery fund for fiscal year 2013. This will aid in eliminating the deficit in the lottery fund for fiscal year 2013. The Atlanta Board of Education's mission for Atlanta Public Schools is to educate all students through academic excellence, preparing them for success in life, service, and leadership. And the board's vision for Atlanta Public Schools is to be a student-centered, high-performing urban school district where all students become successful, lifelong learners and leaders. And with this end in mind, the board provides governance and leadership that promotes student performance and system effectiveness in accordance with advanced ed SAC standards. As a result, at the August 12th meeting, the Atlanta Board of Education passed a resolution authorizing the superintendent of schools to restructure the board policy manual to improve the functionality and accessibility of the board's policies. The board hopes that the new structure of the board policy manual will maintain the intention of the board and the content of the policies. The superintendent should implement the new structure at the time of the migration of the board policy manual database to the board docs management system. In this week's New Hire Spotlight, we would like to congratulate three newly hired principals at Atlanta Public Schools. Executive Director Dr. Danielle Battle welcomed the following principals to the district. Marwene Riller, Hope Hill Elementary School, Charlotte Davis, South Atlanta School of Law and Social Justice, and Dr. Timothy Jones at Best Academy High School. Ms. Davis is the interim principal of South Atlanta School of Law and Social Justice. She has served as an assistant principal and instructional coach at South Atlanta School of Law and Social Justice, and also she was a math department chair at Thurl High School. Ms. Davis. And I, I would like to the record to show, although I would like to be related to her, that I am not knowingly related. Absolutely. Miss no. Maureen Willer. Ms. Wheeler is the new principal at Hope Hill Elementary School. She has served as the principal at Palmetto Elementary and Renaissance Middle School in Fulton County. <laughs> Dr. Timothy Jones. Dr. Jones is the new principal at Best Academy High School. Formerly, he served as principal at Marietta Middle School and the director of curriculum and instruction with Marietta City Schools. We welcome our principals and we wish you the very best. Welcome to APS. Atlanta Public Schools held its ninth annual State of the Schools event on Tuesday, August 13th. In Atlanta Public Schools, we see pockets of growth and certainly achievement. 
we see points of light, such as justice, uh, in classrooms in all regions of this city. We see stunningly committed and stunningly hardworking teachers, uh, parents, uh, and principals. We see real signs of improvement in everything from early learning and the administration of special education to an increase in our students' performance on standardized tests and a decrease uh, in our dropout rate. We, one of the things we have in our strategic plan is the creation of career academies. Uh, and in those career academies, we are identifying uh, or trying to identify the pathways for the future. Superintendent Errol B. Davis Jr., the Atlanta Partners for Education, Atlanta Board of Education, along with over 300 business and community leaders, elected officials, parents, teachers, principals, and neighborhood representatives were in attendance. This year's theme was honoring our legacy, building our future. During his tenure at APS, Superintendent Errol Davis has managed the district's transition to regain SAC's accreditation, provide for the equitable distribution of academic resources, and maintain high ethical standards. During the State of the Schools address, the superintendent discussed the continued implementation of the district's five-year strategic plan to improve student achievement and honor APS's 141-year legacy. Stakeholders are given an opportunity to speak publicly to the board each month at the board meeting. Several of the public comments at the August 12th meeting focused on the future use of the David T. Howard Building, mold at Washington High School, the K-8 proposal at Tuber Elementary, and the Real Men Read program. Let's take a brief look at a few of the night's public comments. It's very important for us to know who David T. Howard is. Nine years after that very writing by the Honorable Booker T. Washington, the Old Fourth Ward, the property on 551 Houston Street at the time, which is now John Wesley Dobbs Avenue, parcel 14-0046-009-0511-1, was donated to the Milton County at that time Board of Education, Fulton County Board of Education today. This donation was made to help address a serious problem of lack of educational opportunities for black children in the community and help solve the continuous issue of overcrowding. I'm here this evening to express my support for the forthcoming Tumor Pre-K through 8 proposal. Uh, when my wife and I moved into Kirkwood, we heard great things about Tumor, that there was significant parent and community involvement, and the school was in the midst of a very positive transformation. Now that my daughter is attending Tumor, I can confirm that what we'd heard is true. She had a truly wonderful experience last year in pre-K, and we are looking forward to another great year uh, in kindergarten. However, uh, for years now I've heard parents, including myself, express both admiration for Tumor, but also concern about Cone Middle. I believe that this concern has unfortunately led to a significant degree of attrition of students as parents opt to either send their children to nearby charter schools or private school if they have the financial wherewithal or to simply move out of district. Hello everyone, um, my name is Charlotte Scott and I'm a graduate of Washington High School class of 1988 and I'm coming forth to express the urgency of what needs to happen at Booker T. Washington High School, a historical institution where the late Dr. King even graduated and we have ancestors that their blood was shed at that institution so that many of us where blacks could not go to school, we were able to go to school at that one institution. And they came from all around the world, different states, when uh, African Americans were able to go to school at that institution when there was no other. I am Kelly Baker Boone and Cheryl Jones, and we are ATL Read Inc. It's a nonprofit organization providing educational programming throughout the metropolitan city of Atlanta. And we are here today to present Success, a program endorsed by the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, Ambassador Andrew Young, and Atlanta City Council President, excuse me, Caesar Mitchell. Real men read. Read, excel, achieve, lead. For an hour each month, mentors read aloud to children from engaging appropriate books aligned to grade level standards. All of the students receive a copy of each book to add to their at-home personal library 
and for parental involvement. Board Chair Ruben McDaniel says the board has a lot of upcoming work around leveling, the search for a permanent superintendent, and policy work. Listen to Ruben's remarks regarding the August 12th meeting as he recaps important moments and outlines key objectives for the board moving forward. We hired a new search firm to assist us with the superintendent search. Uh, board of Law and Diversify Consulting will be our leaders in that effort and as we head toward an October 1st deadline for getting applications in and begin the work of hiring a new superintendent, we're very pleased to have him on board uh, from a search perspective. Uh, we also addressed some issues at Washington High School that have been well uh, publicized around some mold issues there. The superintendent and their staff are on top of it and I believe that will be remediated quickly. But the board gave the authority to use whatever funding and emergency and procurement requirements necessary to make sure we have a safe environment for our schools to, uh, uh, to thrive in. And of course, we got a report on the first day. We had the first day of school was last Wednesday. Uh, all the schools opened well. We had uh, real success with our registration. We did a lot of effort there. We had 5,000 more students registered on town than we had last year. That's a big, uh, a big change and big importance for us to have students in the classroom on the first day. So we had a successful first day. Looking forward to a great school year. Well, I think that um, you know, once we get through the first day, we do always have leveling and other cleanup work to be done, make sure the bus schedules and class sizes and all that uh, are, are, are properly aligned. So we'll work on that next, uh, next time. Uh, we've been doing policy work all along, and so as we kind of move into the next couple of months, we'll be continuing our policy, uh, you know, policy work. Uh, but the superintendent search and visioning around that is going to be the most important work we do between now and really uh, until we get that uh, person in place. And so the next couple of board meetings will have uh, plenty of conversations about superintendent search process and really creating a vision for the school system going forward. Be sure to tune in each month for information regarding the Atlanta Board of Education and important agenda items for monthly meetings. The next board meeting will be held on September 9, 2013 at the Center for Learning and Leadership located at 130 Trinity Avenue Southwest, Atlanta, Georgia 30303. Stakeholders who would like to provide public comments during the monthly committee of the whole meeting should contact the board office at least one hour prior to the scheduled start time of the committee of the whole meeting by calling 404-802-2200. Stakeholders wishing to address the board during the community meeting must register in person at the sign-in table from 5 o'clock p.m. to 5.50 p.m. on the day of the community meeting. Community members must list their names and the agenda item or topic they wish to address, and they will be given up to two minutes to address the board. Thank you for tuning in. At APS, we are renewing our commitment to you.